humanoid robots just crossed not one, but two massive milestones that are changing the entire robotics landscape. First, for the first time ever, a humanoid robot actually took flight using real jet engines. Not a simulation, not a concept video, a real-world flying humanoid. And at the exact same time, one of China's top robotics companies, Rokea, has launched an entirely new generation of humanoid robots designed for real industrial deployment, solving one of the hardest problems in factory automation, the last mile. So yeah, we're not just talking about flying robots. We're talking about robots that fly and robots that work. Let's start with the jaw dropper, the flying humanoid. For decades, science fiction has teased us with humanoid robots that could fly, leap into the air, and dash across extreme terrains like superheroes. But the real-world physics? They're brutal. Getting a 70 kin or humanoid off the ground is no small feat. But the engineers at the Italian Institute of Technology, IHIT, along with collaborators from Milan Polytechnic and Stanford University, just made history. The robot is called Iron Cub 3, and it's not just an upgrade, it's a revolution in design. This little machine stands about 125 centimeters tall, roughly four feet, but don't let its size fool you. Iron Cub 3 is a powerhouse. It has four jet engines, two mounted on its arms and two on its back. These aren't hobbyist turbines either. They generate a combined thrust of 1,000 newtons, enough to lift the robot off the ground. And they're pushing out air at temperatures nearing 800 jaijiyitsa. That alone would be impressive. But Iron Cub 3 didn't just lift off in a controlled lab demo. It hovered 50 centimeters, a foot and a half, into the air during its first real-world flight tests. Yes, we're still talking about a humanoid robot, with a head, arms, legs, and now jet engines. And here's what's wild. This robot isn't just flying because of brute force. It's smart. Its AI has been trained using airflow simulations and real-world wind tunnel testing. That means it's learning to understand how its body interacts with turbulent air adapting its posture in real time. The goal? To make this humanoid maneuver like a drone, except with arms and legs and a brain that can make decisions about complex environments. This isn't just a tech flex, it's about function. The researchers aren't trying to build Iron Man, they're solving a very real problem. Imagine disaster zones where access is blocked, too dangerous for humans to enter. Earthquakes, collapsed buildings, chemical spills, in those situations, a robot that can walk, analyze, and then take off vertically to cross obstacles or reach elevated zones. That's a game changer, and this is only the beginning. Right now, they're testing Iron Cub 3 in a secure facility. But soon, flight trials will begin in a larger space at Genoa Airport to scale up. Higher altitude, longer flights, more complex maneuvering. This isn't the first time IIT has pushed boundaries. The Iron Cub is a spin-off of their long-standing open-source humanoid platform called iCub, which dates back to the early 2000s. The iCub was built to study cognition, how robots perceive and interact with the world. Over time, it became one of the most used humanoid platforms in academia, thanks to its 50-plus degrees of freedom, dexterous hands, and full-body sensors. Now, that foundation is being pushed to the edge of physics. The team didn't just slap some turbines on a mannequin and call it a day. Every part of Iron Cub 3 has been re-engineered to withstand extreme stress. The titanium spine gives it durability and helps distribute the jet thrust forces. The joints are tendon-driven with high-performance brushless motors and harmonic drives, allowing precise movement even in mid-air. And here's something that makes this project stand out. Simulation and iteration. Using tools like PTC Creo, the team builds and maintains a digital twin of Iron Cub 3. That means after every test, they refine the mechanical design based on what worked and what didn't. Tweaking thrust angles, reinforcing heat shielding, and optimizing the frame for flight. They also use ANSYS Fluent, a powerful computational fluid dynamics tool to simulate how air flows over and around the robot's body. From that, they build simplified models to inform the robot's flight control algorithms. So, while the robot might only hover for now, 
everything about its design is pointing toward one thing. Longer, smarter, more agile flight. Now let's pivot to the second major breakthrough. One that's less flashy than flying robots, but possibly just as important for real-world robotics. China's Roke Robotics, already known for high-performance collaborative robots, cobots, and industrial automation systems, just revealed their new generation of embodied AI products for 2025. While the humanoid form gets all the attention, there's an unsexy but critical piece of the automation puzzle that's still missing. The last mile. That final stretch. Those last steps in a production line, or the final actions of a packaging process, are often still done by humans. Why? Because they're complex, dynamic, and unpredictable. You need dexterity. You need real-world reasoning. And above all, you need reliability in unstructured environments. That's exactly where Roque's new robots come in. They've shifted gears from just building powerful manipulators to building embodied AI agents that can work autonomously in real-world factory scenarios. What they're essentially doing is transforming robots from scripted machines into intelligent coworkers that understand context, handle variability, and adapt on the fly. And this is a critical move, especially for industries under pressure from labor shortages and rising demand. While Roque hasn't yet revealed all the technical specs, what's clear is that this new generation builds on years of platform development. Their robots already lead in speed, accuracy, and safety. But now, they're layering in AI, vision systems, multimodal perception, and contextual understanding to create robots that can operate independently with very little human intervention. Think of a robot in a busy warehouse. Packages aren't placed perfectly, Labels are smudged. Lighting conditions change. Traditional automation would fail. But an embodied AI system? It can navigate all of that. That's the leap Roque is making. And here's the interesting thing. They're not focused on sci-fi humanoids right now. They're focused on function. On solving tangible industrial problems. They're building intelligent arms, mobile bases, and modular systems that work in real time with humans or alone. This approach could be a sneaky smart play. While others chase the holy grail of general purpose humanoids, Roque is locking in early control of applied robotics in factories, a market already worth billions. So let's zoom out and connect the dots. On one side, you've got Iron Cub 3, a flying humanoid that breaks the boundaries of mobility, fusing high performance hardware with deeply integrated AI models trained in virtual wind tunnels. On the other, Roque Robotics, shifting from traditional automation to embodied intelligence. Robots that don't just repeat, but perceive, think, and act based on what's happening around them. Both represent a different angle on the same trajectory. Robots becoming more human, not in how they look, but in how they think and act. This isn't about replacing humans. It's about extending human capability. Whether it's a flying robot scanning a collapsed building from the air, or an AI-powered machine finishing up a packaging task in a chaotic warehouse. These machines are bridging gaps we couldn't before. And what's perhaps most impressive is that we're witnessing these milestones in the same year. 2025 may well be the year where humanoid robotics stopped being potential and started being real. So we've got robots flying through the air and AI arms mastering the chaos of the factory floor. But agility? real, spine-tingling, human-like agility? That's a whole different level, and Lumos Robotics just nailed it with Loose 2. Their latest humanoid robot, Loose 2, has hit the scene, and it's turning heads for one very specific reason. Agility. Not theoretical agility, not lab bench demo agility, but real, on-camera, blink-and-you-miss-it movement. We're talking about a robot that can go from lying completely flat on the ground to standing upright in one second. One second. That kind of explosive power, balance, and coordination is something you typically associate with professional athletes or stunt performers. All right, let's start with the moment that made this go viral. In the demo video released by Lumos Robotics, Laos 2 is flat on its back, completely grounded. No wires, no harness, no human assistance just lying there like it's been powered down. And then out of nowhere, it springs up, literally launches itself into an upright stance in one seamless, fluid motion. There's no struggling, no delay, no clunky mechanics. It just happens, 
You almost have to rewind and rewatch to believe it. That move alone shattered expectations, because let's be real, most humanoid robots today still need help getting off the floor. Some use external supports. Others take a long, slow, multi-step process just to sit up. But loose too? It made the whole thing look effortless. And that's just the beginning. So let's talk about what makes this move such a big deal. Why is a robot standing up so exciting? Because it's not just standing up. It's demonstrating a full-body, kinodynamic response in a human-like form factor. In plain English, it means the robot isn't just executing pre-programmed commands. It's actively calculating balance, force, motion, and stability in real time. Think of what your body does when you get off the ground quickly. You shift your weight, brace your muscles, adjust your arms for balance, maybe even use momentum to swing your legs. Loose 2 did all of that, with no human bones or muscles. This means its actuators, sensors, and motion planning systems are working in near-perfect sync. That's not easy. That's actually ridiculously hard. For years, roboticists have been obsessed with solving locomotion and fall recovery. We've seen robots walk, run, and even do backflips. But they've always relied on highly choreographed environments. Loose 2's ability to recover from a fully grounded position so quickly suggests something deeper is at play. A new level of full-body agility combined with adaptive intelligence. Let's talk about the company behind it. Lumos Robotics. Now Lumos isn't as globally famous as Boston Dynamics or Tesla, but they've been making quiet waves in the robotics world with their focus on human-like responsiveness. Their first-generation robot, Loose 1, already had impressive joint articulation and mobility, but Loose 2? This is an entirely different beast. This robot is clearly built with high-performance actuators and lightweight materials that maximize torque and responsiveness. You can actually see the joints flex and release tension with a kind of fluidity you typically only get in organic systems. The engineers behind Loose 2 seem obsessed with one core goal, bridging the gap between robotic mechanics and natural motion. And this video proves they're getting closer than almost anyone else right now. What really sets Loose 2 apart isn't just the hardware, it's the control systems. From what we know, it's using a neural motion engine that processes both proprioception and external sensor data in real time. In other words, the robot knows where its limbs are in 3D space and how much force they're exerting, while also analyzing the terrain beneath it, all at once. That's how it pulls off these explosive, precise movements without tipping over. Now here's the question on everyone's mind. Does this mean we're finally approaching truly lifelike robots? Not just humanoid in appearance, but in behavior, motion, decision-making, presence? It's hard to say definitively, but Loose 2 is pushing us way closer than most thought possible just a year ago. Especially when you factor in how fast this field is moving. The robotics race right now is speeding up. Tesla's Optimus is learning hand-eye coordination in real factories. Boston Dynamics' new Atlas is showcasing next-gen perception. Figure AI is going full throttle on real-world deployment. And now Lumos is dropping this bombshell of motion agility. We're no longer in the stage of, can a robot walk? That's old news. The new question is, can a robot react like a human? Can it adapt? Fall and recover? Change behavior in real time? Loose 2's upright spring from a grounded position is answering that with a yes and doing it with style. So let's unpack a few more layers. Why does this particular kind of agility matter so much? Because it opens the door to a new level of usefulness. Picture a robot working in a warehouse or a home. It's moving around, maybe carrying tools or assisting someone. Suddenly, it slips or is knocked over. With older designs, that's a full shutdown or a manual reset. But loose too? It's back up in one second. No problem. No help needed. That self-sufficiency is huge. Agility like this also hints at potential in high-risk environments. Rescue missions. Disaster zones. Battlefield logistics. Places where humans can't safely go. But robots like Loose 2 might. Being able to move through debris, recover from impact, and keep going is a game-changer. And we haven't even touched on the psychological effect. Watching Loose 2 move the way it does doesn't just impress you. It disorients you. Your brain almost forgets it's watching a machine. Because this? 
This is movement we associate with living beings. Fast, dynamic, intentional, not mechanical, not rigid, but alive. Let's talk a little more about the design. Loose 2 has a sleek, minimalist aesthetic, not bulky, not overbuilt. The proportions are human-like, but not cartoonish. And that matters, because part of what makes its movements feel so real is the way they match its form. Every time it flexes a joint or shifts its balance, it looks right. There's a rhythm to it, a choreography, and then there's the silence, or at least the lack of the usual servo whine and gear grinding we're used to hearing in high-powered robots. This thing moves almost silently, which is both amazing and slightly eerie. There's a moment in the demo where Loose 2 walks toward the camera after standing up, and it's shockingly smooth. No visible jitter, no stomping, just confident controlled motion, like it knows exactly where it's going and how to get there. So what's next for Loose 2? Lumos hasn't released a full roadmap yet, but it's clear they're positioning this as more than just a research platform. They're aiming at real world deployment, which raises a ton of interesting questions. Will this robot be helping people in homes? Assisting in medical facilities? Acting as a mobile assistant in factories or offices? With this level of agility, the possibilities just exploded. But there's another layer here too, autonomy. Because agility is only part of the story. For Loose 2 to truly function like a human, it needs reasoning, it needs memory. It needs decision-making capabilities that go beyond motion planning. Lumos has hinted that Loose 2 is being integrated with a large language model-based control system, likely something like OpenAI's API or a proprietary version. If that's true, we're looking at the fusion of human-like motion and human-like communication. That's not just a robot you can watch, it's a robot you can talk to. One that can understand tasks, explain what it's doing, and maybe even ask for clarification. Let's zoom out for a second. The race toward humanoid robotics has always had two major hurdles, mobility and intelligence. One without the other isn't enough. You can have a brilliant AI, but if it can't move with precision, it's stuck in a box. And you can have a super agile robot, but without smart decision-making, it's just a glorified puppet. Loose 2 seems to be attacking both sides of that equation. And that's why it's breaking the internet right now not just because it stood up quickly, but because it made us rethink what robots are actually capable of.